I was driving fine, went to get gas. Now car won't start nor crank, but it's still getting power and no check engine light. Okay, so now it you just got gas and it doesn't crank over. Is that correct? Yeah, like at first it did it the first time. I kind of just waited it out and then it started right up. And then I drove around for about uh, like pretty much an hour, hour and a half. And then pretty much came back still, tanked it still pretty much on full. And yeah, went to drop my wife off to get some subway and now I'm stuck in the parking lot. Okay, so everything powers up. It just it doesn't click or make any noise when you try to start it, correct? Right. Like the only clicking noise I hear is like on the passenger side, on the underneath the, like I guess it's the AC or something. It clicks every now and then, but it stops and go away. Okay. Are you sure the battery isn't the issue? Yeah, the battery is brand new. Do you know what the battery? Do you know what the battery voltage is at? It's sitting at like fourteen, like almost fifteen watts. Okay, so the the battery, it's a twelve volt battery. If the engine's turned off, right, it should be at about twelve, twelve six. Yeah, I I keep putting in my uh, OBD reader just to make sure like everything's still reading the same. And yeah. Okay, what does it say when you plug in your scanner? Okay. So, all right. So as long as it doesn't drop down when you try to start it, then we should be okay. So I assume your question to me is what could be causing this. Is that correct? Yeah, what could cause it and if I could somehow fix it pretty much the, the way how I did earlier. And, and how did you fix it earlier? Uh, earlier, I pretty much was just playing around, messing with the key. It kept saying, like, after a while, like, the key fob wasn't in the car. Even though I was in the car, I just kept, like, trying to remote start it. I got out the car, locked it, waited, like, five minutes, got back into it. You know what? <clears throat> I'd be willing to bet you probably have a locked-up module, which is very, very, very common on these vehicles. So the starting circuit... Yeah, locked up computer. The starting circuit requires several computers on board the vehicle to start and run this engine. And one of them is the, the keyless ignition node or the KIN, KIN module. Uh, another one is going to be your radio frequency hub, which is another module. You got your body control module. You got your powertrain control module. And then you have your, um, I think you have a, you might even have a, sometimes they have a circuit board in that basically fuse box doesn't look like it has one on this one but anyway what you could do is if you disconnect the battery cables from the battery and rub the cables together for five minutes then reconnect the cables back up to the battery that might do the trick okay now yes yes sir that's correct i'll repeat that again you're going to disconnect the battery cables from the battery and you're going to rub the cables together for five minutes and then you're going to reconnect the cables back up to the battery and see if that does the trick now i don't think you have to do it for five minutes but the engineers tell the technicians in the field to rub them together for five minutes <laughs> every time i tell people this they're like do i really got to do it for a whole five minutes <laughs> real world experience tells me no you don't have to but I don't argue with the engineers that build these vehicles. This is just, just what they tell us. Right. So now if that works, there's no guarantee that's a permanent fix. You probably have one of these modules are starting to go bad or may need to be updated at your dealership. Okay. Yeah, because then the closest one would be about, uh, I want to say like a 20 minute drive if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Do you have any more questions while we're on the phone, my friend? I hear you're working on your vehicle. Uh, not really. I'm really just trying to make sure I get back home. It's only like a, literally like a three minute drive. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Is there anything else I can, I can assist with while we're on the phone? Uh, do you have any other questions or anything I can help with? Or <clears throat> if you want, what you can do is you can run some tests. You can try the battery disconnect procedure. You can check the fuses. You can check the battery, all that good stuff. And if anything comes up, you can always reply back online. Oh, actually, so say if it was a like a blown fuse or something, mm -hmm. could could that also be like a problem as well? Absolutely. But yeah, I, I don't know. 
I'm still kind of like trying to get the gist of everything. So, <laughs> so when you plug in your scan tool, it said no codes, right? Yeah, it had no codes, but because I have a straight pipe, it only have a uh, an O2 sensor code. That's literally the only code that uh, shows. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I don't even think these are going to be able to touch each other. <laughs> it's too short. So what we do in that case, you'll have to use a jumper wire that you can actually mm -hmm. you can use to jumper the positive and the negative cable together. If they're too short, they don't they don't touch each other. And I'm kind of like extending it slightly and mm -hmm. rubbing a little bit. If it does, is that fine? If it does it just a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So if this or if it does work and it the only way to get like a um would I have to try and purchase like a open one that's not locked? I nope. don't run into this problem again. An open one what? Uh like a what a, a ECM or TCM? Well, you'd have to figure out which module is locked up or is starting to lock up, starting to go bad. So the, both the radio frequency hub and the keyless ignition node are both common to, to cause this problem, but it could be any any module on board the vehicle. So somebody with a, with a more elaborate scan tool could plug into the computer system right now and they could check to see which one's not communicating. And they could also see which one has tons of codes Right, a basic code reader is only going to use, the, only going to be able to read the the engine or the powertrain control module. Right. So I suppose I suppose the starter could be bad, but here's the thing: you said um, something earlier that it, it didn't recognize the key fob, so that wouldn't be related to the starter. Although it's possible you got two separate issues. But if you want, what I can do is I can connect you either with a mobile mechanic or a shop in your area, if that would help out. Uh, I, I know all the shops around me is okay. uh, closed today. Yeah, well, well I'm, I'm just, what I'm, yeah, I got you. I was just saying I could recommend one that you could call during normal business hours. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would probably call Monarchy because they were the one who, because I had got an engine swap. Okay. And my original motor kind of had a bad, uh, it, it had like, it wasn't holding compression in the seven cylinder. So, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm going to let you go, my friend. I think we've, we've done all we can here on the phone. Um, do you have any more questions I can assist with while we're on the phone? Uh, no, sir. All right. You're going to have to get a tow and then. Um, I, you can check. You can check the starting circuit. Check for power down at the starter. I suppose that's a possibility. But I think you have a bad module causing this problem. Okay. Okay. But uh, good luck, and let me know if you have any other questions. Just reply back to our chat. I'll be happy to help. All right. All right. Thank you again. You're welcome. Bye bye.